Ladies and gentlemen, DBNA Television is proud to bring you a Roar Media production, the nation's number one digital coaches show. If you do not know him, you better Google him. He was a high school Hall of Famer, school record holder, 10-time letter winner. He was just a boy with a ball and a young man with visions of greatness from the land of Hoosiers. When his playing days were over, he wanted to give back to the game that provided him purpose. He had found his passion on the hardwood. 14 years college coaching, multiple regional and conference championships, multiple national rank programs, coached the National Player of the Year. Winning followed him to 15 seasons professional coaching, multiple championships, multiple Coach of the Year honors, near 780 win percentage. He placed over 100 players to their respected national teams that represented their countries at the World Championships and Olympic Games. He has coached current and former NBA NBA stars. His purpose is now to serve, empower, inspire. Here he is, host of the Coach Scott Field Show. Make some noise, show some love. Host Scott Field. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. No matter where you're watching us from around the globe, I say thank you for allowing us into your homes and into your hearts. I'm grateful. If you're watching us on the DBNA Television Network, with Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV, a sincere thank you for your support and continue to support our other outstanding talent. If you're listening to us in podcast form, turn us up and let us put that flavor in your ear. And if you're watching us on Facebook Live, hey, let's uh, send comments, ask questions, and make sure we share this empowering content. Uh, it's time to lace them up with another edition of the Coach Scott Field Show. My special guest today is a return guest to the Coach Scott Field Show. Awful excited to have my Hoosier buddy uh, coming on here with me today. Uh, he's a South Bend LaSalle stud, former Mr. Indiana Basketball, Rock Chalk Jayhawk, baby. He represents Kansas. Uh, 1982, 28th overall draft pick by the Cleveland Cavaliers, which was the fifth pick of the second round behind Fred Roberts. How about that for some research for you, Mags? And then uh, right now he is president of the uh, TBL, <laughs> baby. TBL. <laughs> Mags, my friend, David Magley, how are you, brother? Well, oh, Scott, what an, what an honor. I mean, from a little podcast a couple years ago when we spoke to what you're doing today is amazing. And just in the last few months, you've had Rick Barry and you've had Spencer Haywood and you've had – Antoine Carr, and you know, you 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 had um, Lee Nalon. You've had some really great talent uh, come out here. I don't, not certain I deserve to be in those categories, but I'm I'm grateful to be amongst them. That's for sure, because those are all legends right there. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, you are a legend in my eyes. I'm an Indiana boy. We're just a couple Indiana boys chopping it up today, and I can remember you donning that Indiana number one jersey playing at Lewis Cass High School with the guy Ted Kitchell from my high school. And I remember your shoulder all wrapped up in a sling. So I can remember you from back in the day, back when uh, our physiques were a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, mine was for sure. I don't know about you. I just saw you with your shirt off and your wife had a, on vacation someplace. And that was pretty amazing how good you guys are still looking. And me, um, on the other hand, this is, this is what you look like when you, when you build a business. Sometimes you get a little, a little too, many, too many meals in your lap, so to speak. But it's, it's working <laughs> No, we uh, we had our daughter's wedding down in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and it was outstanding. But to share this time with you now, my friend, I'm super excited about this. And and thanks for coming on to talk about, you know, let's shine a light on your career, the TBL, collaborating and the work that you and your wife are doing, building this this minor league that is so visible throughout social media. It's got it. It's, it's, it's been it's been um I was on a different podcast earlier in the week, and they said if, if you could go back and and tell an 18 year old David what 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 he should do differently, I would just say, man, just enjoy the process. I wouldn't change a thing, and recognize that everything in our lives builds to something that's 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 significant. Every life lesson is built to something greater. So where we're at right now in our life is is pretty cool, and there's been a lot of ups and downs to get there, but but we're grateful for all the process because. You know, when they say trust the process, it really does work if you stay in that moment and, and you stay ready for the blessing that's, that's on the horizon. 
Yeah, and see, you use that word blessing, and I know you're faith-based and faith-driven, and I think that's part of who David Magley is to provide so many opportunities for these outstanding coaches, uh, team owners, uh, the communities. And, you know, let's talk a little bit about that because, you know, you were a guy who was kind of came up through the minor league system yourself with the Albany Patroons and Wyoming. So talk about that a little bit coming from, you know, being in Indiana, Mr. Basketball and, and how did that kind of shape and form your life? Well, you know, I, honestly, Scott, the, 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 the Mr. Basketball thing was, was um, a, a great experience that I'm, that I'm probably been more proud of the further I've gotten away from the award. You know, when you first get it, my mother passed away my senior year in high school. And, and to be quite frank, I don't know if I was the best player on that all-star team. To your point, Ted Kitchell was a great player, won a national championship. Randy Whitman had a 14, 15-year NBA career, was, is, a, is a great NBA coach. Um, Landon Turner was, would have been a great NBA player had he not gotten an accident. Uh, Poncho Wright won a national championship at Louisville. Thad Garner started at Michigan. Greg Jones started at, at, at Butler. Um, uh, 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 Kurt, Kurt Clawson started at Purdue. Um, you know, Dale White started at Louisiana, at, at Illinois State. Jackie Moore started at Nebraska. I mean, and, and, and these are just uh, Wallace Bryant, John Hegwood, both started at San Francisco. You know, when you go through the list of the talent that we had, to say I was the number one in that group, I don't know if that's fair, but I was probably the best story. So. My mother died on a Tuesday. We buried her early in the morning on Friday so that I wouldn't miss a, a, a class so I could qualify to play that night. Only in Indiana would you be worried about that. And that was a request of hers. And I got to go to one hour of school, so I was eligible to play that night, and I scored 40 in the first half. Wow. Again, only in Indiana do you, do you have those opportunities. Um, the school record was 41 for the whole game. And my coach didn't know it, nor did he probably care. And he didn't play me in the second half. So uh, needless to say, there's a little pressure on him for me to score 42 the next game. But, <laughs> but those, those Indiana legends are born out of, out of, out of you know, uh, conflict and, and, and tragedy and, and opportunity. And, and then I was doing really well. And then about a month later, I dislocated my shoulder. And that's when I got fitted for that harness that you spoke about. And when they found a harness for me to play in, it really did make me look worse than I was. It, it may look like I was playing in the sling. Like, uh, how can this guy score all these points with the sling? I went, in reality, it really didn't limit my, my mobility that much. And I just played with the t-shirt on it because it would, it would rub me chaff if I didn't have something on it. And then, you know, we got going again as a team. And then the second best player on my team was ruled academically ineligible just before the sexual tournament. So now there's another piece of drama. And I went from scoring about 26, 28 a game to probably 42 a game the rest of the way. We went to the semi-state. So those things make for a great story. Doesn't necessarily mean I was better than anyone in my class. It just meant I mean, we had, I mean, Scott, we probably had 20 more guys. John Kitchell went to, um, went to Purdue. We yep. had, um, we had uh, another guy uh, go, go, to, go to Nebraska. We had probably 12 guys in Northern Indiana went to Arkansas and Kent State and you know, so just a lot of great talent that didn't make the all-star team. So, again, picking one guy, probably not fair, but I was sure grateful I got to be that. And that, that led to a whole other career that, that allowed me to be able to, to, to build something out of this. And playing in the CBA for Phil and, and, and Albany was awfully neat. I mean, it was, it was tough to go from the NBA to the CBA, but doing it at that time, with the kind of crowds that was so special for that. It, it felt like Indiana high school basketball. I mean, my favorite time playing ball was growing up in Indiana. It, Kansas was great, and the field house is amazing. We played in Rupp, and we played in, 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 in Michigan State. We played all over Madison Square Garden, all over the world. It was nothing like going to Plymouth when they hate you or going to, you know, the, going to South Bend, Washington, when there's 4,000 fans there and the rivalry is big. Nothing's like that. But – all beneath kind of felt like the way, you know, 3,000 fans. We were, Siena was low D1. University of Albany was D3. So we were the biggest show in town. And it was really pretty cool. And once you got over your ego of not being in the NBA, if you could embrace it, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, see, and 
when you, when you share those stories, you just, you just think of things that of Indiana legend and what Indiana basketball was. And when you and I played high school basketball, there was no classification. It was big versus small. Of course, the movie Hoosiers. Um, I mean, come on, that's, that's what Indiana basketball was all about. And, you know, I feel like great life lessons could be taught through that non-classification and Indiana was unique and special because we were one of the only states that didn't have that. Kind of speak on that a little bit, what it was like to just come through Indiana high school basketball without classification. You know, it's, it's funny. We would go to Plymouth to play. And Plymouth is 99.9% is .9 white. Um, very few great athletes as far as size went. There was a six 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 seven kid that went to Louisville named Bob Albertson. It was good. Jimmy Masters would end up in Kentucky, but he was only a sophomore back then. And everybody else were football players, or they were, you know, they were just guys that, that, that shut corn in the summer and built hay. They were just strong guys. But they played the same offense from the third grade through their senior in high school. So they did what Jack Edison, their legendary coach, told them to do. So when we come into play, there's 2,000 fans outside the building lining up to get in for the B team game, which was what the JV was called back then. They're yeah. lined up to get to the B team game. So by the time we even take the court, it is sold out. And they're hooting and hollering. And they're, you know, we come in from the city with predominantly black great athletes that are just dominant. And we're laying it up over in warmups. And we just, you look over there and these guys are all doing the same lineup line. Perfect. Bounce passes, all the techniques. And it's really a, 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 a different, a contrast in styles. But we knew this was not going to be easy. And I remember my, my senior year, we played, at, we played at Plymouth, and I had a lot, maybe 46 or a lot of points. And at the end of the game, as I was coming out, Griff took me out with about a minute to go. He said, Mags, come stand by me because they're going to probably throw stuff at you. They'll throw pennies and ice. And, I mean, the fans were nuts. And they <laughs> booed me. For every time I played there, they booed me. For whatever reason, they hated me because I was – the score or whatever. And in a moment's notice, it all switched and they started giving me a standing ovation. And at the end of the day, as much as they hated me, they knew they saw something special. A guy that his mother had died, uh, he was playing in a brace, his best, second best player on the team had flunked off. And all of a sudden, he put on a show that they'll never forget. And at the end of the day, we're basketball people first and foremost. And we got to give him his due. That was. Something special to watch. And the rest of my life, when I would go into, into Plymouth, Indiana, they have a blueberry festival that they play. They play a, a, a late summer, early fall tournament. If I went to the blueberry festival, it was like magic had walked in. I mean, these guys, the fans treat them great. I, I met Scott Skiles as a rising freshman going to Michigan State on a plane. That's right. And he goes, you don't know who I am, but my name is Scott Skiles. And God, I love playing you, watching you play as a kid. And you're going – you know, who who knew he would be such a great player, pro, and all that. But yeah, and and then was a head, you know was a coach in the NBA. So. I mean, and, and you you step back and you think for a second, how cool is it? Like like the line in Hoosiers, uh, he, uh, Coach Dale's walking up the the stairway, and 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 and, the, and his love interest is walking down the the, the way, and he she's like, what is? Yes, why are you so cold? He goes, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of you making these kids gods. And the coach looks, I'm like, wouldn't anybody die to be a god for one day? And That's she's like, right. you don't see these boys when, when you leave. When they're done, there's the, the world's gods are cheap around here. And there's a lot of people that can't handle that. That's Barbara Hershey played that role. And it's, That's right. it's a really poignant piece because in Indiana, you're treated so differently. That's why it's really an adjustment. Going to Kansas was hard. Because I wasn't that person anymore. Darn it, Valentine was. You know, we had other great players that were. wasn't me. And by the time I was a senior, I had a pretty good career. But it was – that's a whole separate blessing because I got to go through something and figure out how to get better. So all these things are awesome life lessons for us to stop. You know, everybody's career can't be – I mean, Antoine Carr was a beast from the moment. My, my, my highlight of my Kansas career was Antoine signing at Wichita State. Because I mean, he wasn't coming to KU. I was like, I'm going to coach him with your class. They're all like, dit, 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 dit. this is great. Twan's not coming. That's a, that's a big thing because that was going to be tough for me to get playing time. But it, it's, it's for me, it wasn't starting. It was 
you know, I was one for 25, my first 25 shots at Kansas. And, you know, it was not one for 25. It was 0 for 1, 0 for 2, 1 for 3, 0 for 1. You know, it was just a lot of slop times I didn't score bucket. And then there was a fight in the locker room, halftime of a game, and coach was so angry, he said, I'm putting him in. Pretty confident he forgot my name. And he said, Magley, you're going, you're going to start. I'm like, he's like, I'll show you guys. I'm willing to lose. I will put that guy in. And sure enough, I scored the first 10 points in the second half, became a sixth man, made, was all tournament team as a freshman. We're going to start 20 games as a sophomore and every game on soft junior and senior year. And, but man, that blessing of failure was so awesome for me because I got a chance to go through something and to show myself I had more character than I thought. And that's yeah. served the rest of your life. And we rob our kids from that. We, every time there's a little bit, we take our kids to another school or we take them to a different AAU program. And we keep moving them around so there's the best fit. And maybe he needs to learn how to make the fit right where he is. Maybe, maybe the blessing is that pressure he's under right now. I'm so glad to hear you say that because when you look at the numbers now in the transfer portal, it's astronomical. And yes, Think of some of the better players. Michael Jordan was cut from his high school team. I had Keith Smart on here a few weeks ago. He also went through hardship. So I, I do think character can be something that is taught and you grow from and evolve as a person with trials and tribulations. And yes, I agree with you. I feel like if kids are allowed to fail and learn from failure, they're going to be so much more complete of a person to have to learn and overcome that. Well, there, there's a there's a verse in the Bible, that's Romans 5, 3 through 5, that says, For we glory in tribulation, knowing the tribulation works patience, patience, experience, experience, hope, and hope maketh not a shame. Mm. The part everybody skips over is the glory in tribulation. Maybe the blessing is what you're going through. Not, can I get through this? Can I? Can it be great one day? No. Thank you for right where I am. There were times in this league when, when we're borrowing money from my mother-in-law to, to pay refs to keep it going. And we're, we're, and we're going, gosh, why is this so hard? But now that we look back, we go, mm. I wrote a poem. If life were an open book, I wish I was dyslexic. If you look wow. at our life from the back to the front, it makes a lot of sense. From the front to the back, it's a pretty crappy read sometimes. God, why did I go through that? Why am I here? Why am I there? You know, I desperately want you in our league as a coach. You're the right kind of person. You, you've got a good background. Your heart is for the right reasons. I watch what you do with these podcasts. They're amazing. We need you. But you know what? You deserve to be in the right place, too. And I've been trying to figure that out for a while. But <laughs> when you do, it's going to be the right thing. And we're going we're gonna to see something great happen. And I, you, know, you, look at, you look at what's going on in Kokomo right now near your hometown. Pretty darn cool. Hey, okay. C Coach Cliff is doing a great job. They've got talent. I love how... Mark and Jeff have, you know, as owners have got that community behind it. And I'm so thrilled to see that because, you know, that's just six miles from where I grew up. And to see that success and to have something to where it's com community involvement and they're getting behind it and supporting it, I couldn't be happier or prouder for that Bobcat franchise. And then I know, you know, with, you know, little Jimbo Rail and those guys, come on, man, those, those, those are names of legend. And again, basketball is just something special coming from Indiana. Well, I, I, the rest of the world may not understand this, but, but the, the, that whole thing got together because, because Jordan Mount, who's Rick Mount's grandson, yep. was my intern. The and, rocket. <laughs> and I said, I said, Jordan, I see Jimmy Rail's son, Jimbo, uh, it seems to be you know, everybody in Kokomo. Could you introduce me? So he introduced me to Jimbo Rail, who was the greatest guy. And he is like the mayor of, of Kokomo. Everybody <laughs> posterific, and everybody that walks in is like, hey, Jim, they pat him on the back, and, and he's just he's great. So he introduced me to Mark, and Mark brings in Jeff. And But after the first game, there was 2,500 fans. And after the first game, women were coming up to my wife in tears. And they were Aww. like, I can't believe this is in Kokomo. This, this feels like Jimmy Rails out there playing. This is exciting because – Excitement is excitement is excitement. And they got a drum line that's bumping. The bass line is good. Uh, Mark's son, DJ Jansen, is rocking the music up top. And they're, they're going to have dancers. And they have great courtside suites. So it's kind of customized the suite experience. So you can be right there. And I saw a, a tweet the other day from 
the Main Street Cafe that said, our Bobcat boys are down here having lunch. They all have strawberry lemonade every time they come in, and they all love this special meal. It's so cool to see our boys into our boys. Ownership, the fan of the town is taking ownership of those guys. They won't know how special that is to their our age. And then they'll yeah. go, wow, what a moment in time. We got to live in Kokomo, Indiana. It That's awesome. right. I, you know, Mags, I, I love hearing that and I, the enthusiasm and the passion and the purpose behind your voice, because I know you have so much pride in it, because that's 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 a that's a model franchise for other franchises. And I mean, think about the growth and the number of teams that you have in the league from the pandemic. It's like rising from the ashes. And, I, and I'm sitting here watching all this going this is so cool because this is so needed in these communities and the way they're giving back to those communities. Speak on that a little bit with some of the things that you're hearing. I mean, there's some NBA names in here. I mean, come on, stuff going on in Houston and you got Las Vegas and, you know, Carnell Wiley, you know, your commissioner and how actively involved. I mean, speak on some of those things because that's the kind of awareness that we need to build to show what's going on and why this, league is so special and unique well you know we, we look at everything as, as as perspective as opportunity and when when the pandemic hit you know it's no great secret most of our teams pay us pay their league fees on time they, they pay them on a, on a payment plan and, and to go to them and say okay i need my money when we have to shut the season down and their core business which is this is not the core business for most of them are yeah. going to get hurt is probably a little tone deaf it's the same way as people come to me saying, hey, where's my rent check if nothing's coming in? And, you know, you go, well, then what do I do? And literally that next week, Syracuse called and said, hey, when this thing is over, can we talk? I'm like, well, why do we have to wait till it's over? What do you mean? It's going to end. And if it doesn't end, you know, we'll give you your money back. But, you know, I, I think if, if what you want to do is be in this league, let's talk about why that works. Great dancers, great fan base. They pay their players. They're really good in the community. We need Syracuse. And Syracuse came in and they've been unbelievable. But then, and then wow. they come in and Anderson pops. And then, and then when they pop, you know, people are seeing us alive when everybody else's doors are closed. And they're going, huh, how are they? I mean, this is before the NBA went to the bubble. This is before any of that happened. We were, we were building this momentum in this time when, like you said, it was kind of a lot of ashes out there. But a lot of that is – the timing is right. The social things of today, the George Floyd thing, all of that goes to people saying, people that look like us need to learn to listen to people that look like our players. People that look like our players own our teams, coach our teams, are very involved in what we do. And they're engaged in the community so that people that look like us go, I want to partner with them because they are exactly what I need. They what they do in the community, the power that our players have with the with the with touch. If if somebody calls me and says my player is a fifth grader and his father left his mother, he's depressed. He loves your Bobcat team. Um, could you send the player over to encourage him? Okay, well, mm. which one of you have a father that wasn't around when you were in the fifth grade? Unfortunately, quite a few of them. And they'll raise their hands. I need you to go over to this elementary school and talk to this kid. They walk in, they're seven foot, they're six nine, you're clearly not from around here. They put their hands on that, and that that touch, that affirmation says, you're gonna be all right. Mm -hmm. And if you believe you're gonna be all right, because why are you over here? Because you're that important. You're that important that I would come here and have lunch with you, plus I want a free meal, and this is gonna be great. And now, next thing is, you're gonna sit at the end of our bench and you're gonna wipe up the floor as our, as our ball, ball boy. Oh my gosh, it's the greatest thing. Now he's somebody in school. Now his, his energy is good. And if we could just change one kid in each community, we're impacting hundreds of people ultimately. And so corporations want their brand on our shirts because we're going to do things. So now more people are, are driven. So the, the pandemic, pandemic gave us opportunity. We took advantage of it because we have more time. And at the same time, the social things that happen really speak to communities need us. They need us to heal. They need us to look at our guys as men. Not as, not as our guys, that's a stereotype. Scott, I am the straight up coolest white dude you ever met from being around black people. 
been married to a smoking hot Nubian princess for 40 years. And as much as I've got four kids that are considered black, I've got seven grandkids that are considered black. But at the end of the day, I've never been black a day in my life. So I really don't know what it feels like to walk in a store and have somebody look at me because of the color of my skin. My kids do. When the siren goes off, my heart is never, oh my gosh, my oldest son is 6'10", 320 pounds. He said, dad, don't worry about it. I know to put my hands out the window. Would you think of that? I would right. never think of that. I'd yeah. be like, what's the matter, officer? Did I run a stop sign? Am I going too fast? It's just, it's just a different world that these young men live in. So having Amen. them being able to help educate us and, and break down stereotypes to go, I was with that kid just yesterday. He's a great kid. You know, we, that's how we change our society is giving these guys exposure. Kokomo did a, a video today that's on social media, and, and their little uh, hype girl was singing Kokomo. Way down in Kokomo. And not one of them knew the words. It was the that's greatest. Right. <laughs> but when you see their personality, if you don't fall in love with these guys, there's something wrong. And yeah. that's it's changing society's ills at the same time. So I look at that and go, we have a chance to do things that, that very few organizations do. And we have a different perspective. Having my wife found this, having God give her the vision, she has a different view of this than I do because she's been in that skin her whole life. So she treats these kids like they're her kids. When you see them, these players come up and say, what's up, Mama Max? How are you doing? She knows them all by name. You know, I'm struggling. My girlfriend broke up with me. You want me to pray with you? I mean, you'll see kids crying when they're around her because this is, they're not crying when they're around Adam Silver unless he can find them or something. You know, Roger Goodell can't have that impact on people because they don't, but, but Evelyn Magley can because she has a relationship with them that, that I can't. Even though I know it here, I don't know it here the same way they do. Does that make sense? Oh, 100%. And the fact that these guys are playing for the passion of the game they're purposeful. Uh, I just, I, I love the whole feel and aura to what is being given because these players have such a platform and they're taught. And your vision is those guys having that outreach and that connection in that community that is going to change and impact those lives. And that's what this show is all about, all about empowerment. And man, I'm sitting there watching this. And I'm like, Hey, Mags, we got to get you back on the show because, I mean, you guys continue to grow and you guys are evolving as a league and your your presence on social media is so wonderful because that's the outlet right now. And all those platforms that all these owners and, and players are having and using and these owners, I, I love what it's all about, my friend. I, I, I have for years and, and to see where it's at now, man, it's just so fun to see that growth. And, and our vision is... There's, there's a big chasm between the lower level leagues in the U.S. and the G League NBA. Yeah. So we believe there's that, that, that double A baseball opportunity. That's pro B yeah. in Europe. There, there's a niche there. That's right. There is, there's a strong niche. And, 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 and it might be women. You know, why wouldn't there be a WTBL? There is no, there's so few, I don't know how many WNBA franchises there are. I think there's about 16. And, you know, if you got 16 young ladies times 12, you do the math on that. There's really not that many jobs. Right. There's no G League. There's no. They're, 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 they go around the. They go around the world. But when we play the WNBA, most of the women's basketball around the world isn't being played because right. they're fall and winter leagues. Yeah. So you know, there's a real opportunity for us to build a brand of, of women's league. I think that's going to come up pretty soon. Mm. Um, mm. There might be a there might be a development league to our league. Or there might be a super league from our league where we go higher and we, maybe we do TBL plus or we do TBL two. Which direction we go, it doesn't matter, but we build this brand right here, but then we give even a higher level opportunity or there's so many people that want to get in a, a development piece. So there's, there's a lot of areas to grow in that you go, hmm, this could be, this really, we could carve out that niche that when you think mid-level pro basketball in North America, a TBL brand is what's filling that. Yeah, and it and it is special, and I and I love the vision behind it. And you and I have sat, and we've had many conversations, and it's just so fun to see you continue to be consistent, continue to persevere, and continue to put a quality product out there that is meaningful in those communities. And that's what that's what I appreciate because I know it has not been all rainbows and unicorns. I get it because you're you're building something, but the fact that you guys have 
had laser like focus and you've stuck with your vision and seeing that vision come to fruition throughout these communities. And now some of the NBA players that you have involved, talk about some of those guys. I mean, I know who they are, but I want you to kind of promote and talk about the NBA guys and, and ownership that, that you have within this league right now. I mean, Mags, it's special, brother. Uh, I mean, you look at you, you look at Cliff Livingston's coach in the Bobcats. Oh, he's embracing it. He's on billboards, but he's not above anything. He approaches yeah. everybody. Hum. They, they, they walk up to him, coach for stuff. He gives them hugs, and they're just excited. They're there, and then you, you go to Steve Francis, and, and Steve Steve came to our our draft combine, and he was there for three days, and and there wasn't one person that 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 he wasn't approached by. And he took pictures with everyone. And, and if they said he did not want them to feel like that was a bother, so he'd say, hey, where are you from? You can't have a meeting with Steve in open because he's going to leave and go talk to somebody because he's that kind of a people person. Who yeah. would think so? I mean, anybody that has a nickname, this one name like the, the franchise. franchise. <laughs> you know, yeah. you would think that they're pretty full of themselves, and he's not. His coaching staff, Moochie Norris and James White, I didn't know who James White was till I saw posted a highlight of him dunking from the free throw line. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. It was amazing. You look at Jerome Williams. Jerome Williams is the junkyard dog. The junkyard dog. And but he's so wonderful in the community. And what he does with the with the junior three, the big three things that he does with kids. And he's got a rising 11, 12 year old son that technically owns a team. And he's developing him as a as a business owner. Probably wow. gonna be an NBA player. He's a great player. He's going to be really special. You look at Charlie Bell, had a nice NBA career, was one of the Flintstones, won an NCAA championship, and now he's he's impacting a lot of lives. JYD's coach, Doc, is was an NBA player, and a, a dunk contest guy. So, you know, you, you're looking at these guys. They're getting repurposed and getting a chance. It was – it was. Um, I was talking to Kendrick Perkins the other day, and I just met him outside one of our gyms. Wonderful personality, uh, pr pretty bright guy. And I said, you know, the the um, the young man that had such a public uh, falling um, from um, from uh, the Mavericks uh, uh, that was homeless, the Cuban went and got. Um, oh, Delonte West. Delonte West. I said, w would it be fair to say that guys that pl played 10 years in the NBA and their career ends relatively abruptly feel like he looks on the inside? that a lot of people go through this. Uh, the lot they happen to have some emotional and mental things probably that was longer than that and drugs get involved and all that. But, but there's a core issue there where there's not a lot of direction of where to go. We do, we do uh, financial literacy courses for all of our guys. Wow. We tell our guys that we want them to be more than athletes. So don't dream of just being an entertainer. Dream of being a coach. Don't just dream of being a coach, dream of being the executive. Dream of being an owner. Why can't you? Well, I don't have any money. Well, so what? Neither did I when we started this. I mean, most of these teams is guys that find other people, they partner together. You get, I'm in Syracuse, New York. Five owners work together. They're partners. If they need to raise 50000 they all go out and find it. And they do what they have to do. And they're going to run an amazing organization that will stand the test of time. Syracuse Stallions is an amazing organization. But our owner in, 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 in Tampa, Basil Harfouche, he, he comes to us because he's not happy with the way he was treated as a player on a team. Well, if you don't like it, Basil, go get your own team. How, how does that work? Well, we'll do payments plans. We'll do this and this. And he's running a nice organization. And he's playing quite, quite well. He's, he's kind of the Jackie Moon of our league. But he's doing <laughs> an amazing job, and I, and I love him. I mean, and I love his energy as a young person that's in this because it's not, there's no stereotypes. You don't have to be, you know, right now, I, I could never coach college basketball. I could never coach pro basketball because I don't look like a coach. I'm old and I'm fat. You know, nobody looks at the guy and go, I want that fat guy waddling on my sideline. I look like I could own a pro basketball league, like I could be a president, <laughs> but I don't look like I could do that. Well, we, well, we need our guys to see themselves in roles other than just entertainers because they're smart. They have so much to add. Their personalities are wonderful. We just have to do a good job teaching them how what the next step is. And you know, Scott, we want them to be. We want to be like the mob. When you get in our family, you're in our family for life. 
So when you're done, Coach Mags, what can I do? We're going to take our guys. When the summer league opens back up next year, there will be a TBL summer league at the same time. Wow. So our guys will have a chance to play in front of all the scouts. We'll have TBL tours where guys will go on tours. And unlike every other tour, they won't have to pay. You're a TBL family. We're going to find you a job. We want you to be a part of that. When we do junior TBL, we do youth clinics, which our commissioner, Carnell Wiley, is the best I've ever seen uh, doing that. We want our guys to engage in that. Maybe this can be a career for them. But there's so many. The first thing you said was the opportunity to coach, broadcasters, dancers, you know, and this opportunity, it's a showcase league for everybody. So we want our players to participate in all that as well. Yeah, see, and I, and I love that. And then I think, too, the empowerment that women have. Your wife, one of the first African-American owners of a professional league, and yet you, you even have a female head coach in your league. Talk about that. We have two of them. Our, 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 our team in the West Coast Breeze and then our team, the first one, was 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 in, in, in the, the the Dallas skyline, and she's the first African American Angela Weathers, and you know her husband played in the NBA. Right, right. And, and I'm gonna tell you what, Scott, she doesn't take nothing from anybody. She's you know you think you look at her, she's she's attractive. She looks like she could be one of our daughters. Yet one of her best players is her son. She's got a player, a son that can play. That age, I mean, you're going, how could she have a son that's that's in his twenties? He doesn't look like that, but. She's she's all about it. She's a strong woman of faith. She's a great leader for our, she's just we're we're proud of that. And you know, you look at the NBA, virtually everyone has an as a female assistant coach right now. Every one of them is it's been a push. And you know what? At first you think it's a gimmick, and then you realize when you when you when you watch their those coaches coach, there's no gimmick. They know what they're talking about, they're strong, they're they add a value, they have in a way of 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 approaching the guys that maybe coaches don't. You know, today's young people don't care what you know until they know that you care. When you and I were kids, hit us with a whistle. We don't care as long as you get playing time, whatever. But today, it's a different world. And it's not a bad world. It's probably the way they should have been treated all along. I don't think abusing kids, why do we – we, we, we will reward a coach with an extension and more money if he wins. Doing the same behavior that if a professor did it, he would have lost his tenure and been fired. If you yeah. called – Somebody, the, the, the names they call these players, especially in college, you don't get away with as much in the NBA. But the way that they abuse some of these kids and they get rewarded just because they win, I think we're, we're, not, we're not helping coaches use their words better, be able to help them recognize it's, it's greater than that. Fear is a weak motivator. Love is a much more powerful motivator. Mm. I will play for you because you care about me. I'm not going to play well if you – I'm not – if you make me afraid, I'm a, basketball is a, a, a long muscle sport. You shorten that up, I can't shoot. If every time I miss, I see somebody at the desk, it's hard to relax and show how good you are. It really does matter that way, in my belief. No, I, I, I agree with you 100%. I've always seen that paradigm shift coming where positive reinforcement is a much more powerful tool. These guys are humans. They know when they make a mistake. They don't need another human screaming at them when they make a mistake because, like you said, that body language goes down, uh, their confidence goes down. These guys are professional athletes, but yet there's still fragility there. And if you can build them up and empower them and teach them the basics and, the, and put them in a position to be successful, so many positive things can happen. So I, I know we share that same well, vision well, there. We, so we have Coaches across the world that will say they're doing me wrong. They're, they're, they're going to cost me my job. And I'm like, listen, guys, they don't care that much about you. It's not personal. Stop thinking they want to win just like you want to win. Trust me. The players are not trying to do you wrong. They're just, they're just distracted or they're just, whatever the reason is. One of the things Phil did playing for Phil Jackson, there were two things that we learned. He didn't do the triangle. We didn't have Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan, or Michael Jackson. We didn't have anybody. <laughs> but, but, but what Phil did was we played quarter points in the CBA. That's right. So you, there, were, there were four points you could win for winning the quarters and three for, for the game. So you could win seven points. Phil taught us how to win every quarter. That served me well as a coach. But the other thing Phil did is he didn't platoon, but he played all nine, ten guys in a rotation – that you knew when you – so if I make – if I miss my first three shots, Phil wasn't pulling me off. But if I hit three in a row around the time I'm supposed to come out, I might get 30 more seconds, but I'm coming out. 
He's not leaving you in for the full quarter because the next guy that's waiting is getting their mind ready. And I can go as hard as I want, no matter what I do, I'm getting my four minutes. I'm getting my six minutes. The math works out. You still play the same amount of time, but there are rotations that we're subbing because it's this guy's turn, your rest, not because you made a mistake, I'm going to punish you. And that, that thing is one of the reasons why I think Phil was a great coach. I mean, we won the CBA championship. We were his, his first world championship team was the Albany Patroons. And, and, you know, it was, he was really creative that way. Yeah, he, he, he was definitely a visionary. And, you know, he surrounded himself with good people. I mean, Charlie Rosen was a guest on this show uh, last year during the pandemic. And, and to hear his stories uh, of his times with Phil and I, I, there's so much wisdom and so much knowledge and so many tools that can be passed on through a minor league system that I think gets overlooked. And I just think it's just a wonderful opportunity, a wonderful platform, um, the, the connection that you build, the relationships. And, and Mags, let's talk about that. The relationships that you build through this sport. There's so many parallels in life and sport, but yet these relationships that we build as coaches and entrepreneurs, th those are meaningful. And if some of these CEOs of these major corporations could go through a growth process, as you mentioned earlier, that connectivity with your employees, that connectivity with your with your community, that's where the success lies. But so many people forget that and just take care of the little things. And you guys focus on those little things. Well, I Charlie was our assistant coach with with Phil and on yeah. those on those Albany team. I hadn't seen Charlie in 35, 36 years since we played. And then uh, they did a Brendan Casey, a, a young filmmaker, and, and who you need to have on your show sometime. He's incredible. He does a show called the minor, he did a, mo a, 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 a movie called The Minor League Mecca. And it's about the, the first 10 years of the Patroons. Bill Jackson, um, it, it's got, it's got uh, Bill Musselman, it's got George Carl. Those three co wow. coaches, the first three coaches of the Patroons. And wow. it's, it's great stories. And they're talking about Tony Campbell and they're talking about Michael Ray Richardson and they're talking about Derek Rowland and they're talking about Lowe's Moore and they're talking about Ralph and I'm in there for the, the cameo. And they're, they're, they're talking about all these all these great players, Sidney Lowe, um, uh, Rick Carlisle. Um, you know, you just look at all these guys, the, 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 the guy that used to coach OKC that was in New Jersey or Washington, uh, the little guy that, that's, that's the coach. Um, all those guys went through Albany and it's just a great movie, but Charlie calls me to, do I want to be interviewed? When you see him, it's like, I hadn't seen him in 35 years. It's like 35 minutes. You see right. him when he's around us, he tears up because he's proud. Derek Rowland and I were on a team. Derek coaches the Patroons. He, he, Derek and I hadn't seen each other in 35 years. We were played the same position. I started, he was the backup. He played more minutes because his rotation was stronger. So it worked, it worked. It, but today we're still good friends and we hadn't seen each other in 35 years. So there's a, there's a power to team dynamics that, 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 that lasts a lifetime. Yeah. And, and think about it. The lives that you're impacting right now, there's that butterfly effect and think 30 years from now, think of, the lives that they're going to touch and those relationships that we're talking about. There's so many powerful things going on right now that people don't even realize are going on, but yet you're building that fabric, you're building that core, you're building that foundation. And it's a beautiful thing, my man. And I truly believe God has a purpose. God has a plan. And, you know, you being a vessel of that, you and your wife, and I'm just, I'm just a fan. I am a fan. I am a supporter and, and I love what you're doing. I appreciate that. You know, it's funny. The first time we were in Yakima, and, and they'll be back next year. The first time we went to Yakima, I saw a lady that looked like she was about late 40s, early 50s. And she came up to me and she said, Mr. I got to ask you something. Are you the reason why this team is here? I'm like, oh, part of it, you know, and, and tears just started flowing down her face. And I said, we haven't even played a game. I said, what, 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 what's wrong with her? She says, my mom loved the Sun Kings for 10 years. Oh, and wow. She's been gone for 10 years. She died just after they shut down. And I hadn't seen her. You know, I feel like she's here. I feel like her presence because mm. this is what she loved most. And you realize that parents make memories with children. 
parents become part of this. You know, it's so many things we could do through sport if we keep our perspective the right way. That's why we're on our guys about their social media. What does it look like? What? Is, how do you carry yourself? Who's your audience? You know, we don't need to know what you what you believe politically. We don't need to know what you believe as far as your your um your whether whether you're a party or not. What you do with girls or not? It doesn't matter. The audience are those kids. The audience is your future employers, not your boys that might find that funny or your girls that might find that attractive. Right. No, not if you want to use this for the right opportunity. Because we say, use sport, don't let it use you. I have four kids that are all college athletes, and one of them played a little pro tennis. The other four didn't, the other three didn't play pro basketball, but they all got degrees. They all did real well with it. And they're all, they use their sport, the sport didn't use them. And, that's what we want to help all of our young people understand. You, you know, it, I, I hear so much vision and wisdom being talked about what you're just sharing because so many of our athletes only live for today. And we got to get everybody past living for today. And just like you saying, why not be a coach? Why not be a owner? Why not be an executive? And that vision, you're building a bridge out of poverty. And I don't even realize if you know that you're doing that, but you're getting these guys to think about something more than just today because they're just trying to fight and survive for today. And when you get someone who is looking at more than just today and all of a sudden now you've given them a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, and a 15-year plan, think of the power that's in that, Mags. And again, that bridge out of poverty that the TBL is creating, again, I'm going to bust it out come on <laughs> let's keep this thing going because there, there's so much there's so much power being given and these guys are again getting that platform guys ladies coaches owners uh i mean people in the communities who support these guys this is this is powerful my friend and i just i love to see what i've seen you know across all these you know social media networks well we have with our with our partner rice magazine my, my wife ran a, 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 a contest for, a, for our TBL anthem. And, you know, the, 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 the musician, the rapper that came up with the best one, they not only get recognized as the person that, that performed our TBL anthem, we're doing a music video for them. And it will be <laughs> TBL related. So we're, we're showcased even for other talents. We, we want everybody, you know, like, like the thing that I cringe is when we have a recording for the national anthem because that's a chance for somebody to sing in public. I don't care if it's a 12 year old off key or it's, it's, it's the greatest singer you've ever seen. I or you got it over in Kokomo, you got a bluegrass band playing. <laughs> no, it's funny in, in, in Kokomo, they do the national anthem, a moment in prayer, and then they do the, the black national anthem. Mm. with every voice and sing. So you look at that, why wouldn't everybody stand? Because everybody's being, be, being celebrated at the same time. Everybody has an opportunity, and I and I get where everybody comes from because it isn't everybody's country hasn't been the same. It has been 400 years of oppression for certain people. So that is we have to acknowledge that. But what we want to do is we want to do something that encompasses everyone. And so when you you go to a Kokomo Bobcat game, they got a pastor that is their chaplain that that sits in one of the courtside suites. He is so in, wholly inappropriate at the games that you have to love him because he's <laughs> running by every time there's a free throw, you know, they, he, he, stand, he, he sits on the side that the opposing team does in the second half. So he's running under the bleachers. He's making faces when he's walking by, but he's having <laughs> the time of his life. And you're sitting there going, how amazing is this? And you got, you got the, you got the community when they get done, the, the white and the black, and they're all celebrating their Bobcats. And again, that doesn't cure everything, but it's a start. It's a start. It's a that step in the right direction. Another. We're having conversations. We're supporting one another. I mean, for, for me, I, I was most proud this past summer when you saw the number of white people that protested, that were a part of, of a movement Amen. that was trying to help. Amen. I'm not political on either side, I really, but I do want to see people acknowledge that there are other sides and that we can work together to make this a better world. Because, you know, at the end of the day, I've lived all over the world. This is the greatest country in the United States. The greatest country in the world is America. We have mountains, we have valleys, we have oceans, we have deserts. We have black, white, and every race in between, and they're all welcome here. 
Every faith is welcome here, and you don't have to have faith to be here. This is an amazing place that we are, but we're not perfect. And we have to recognize that we can't stop trying to be perfect. We can't identify people. I believe we should stop trying to stop people because their, their, their license plate is, 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 is expired. If they catch me for driving through a toll booth and send me a note, why can't they send that person a note and say, pay your tax? Why are we even putting the police in these problems? It's not fair that we're using officers for the wrong things. It doesn't matter if somebody jaywalked. They don't need to be cuffed and all that. I mean, it's just some of these things are just unbelievable. What's happening, and it grieves my spirit because it just keeps a perpetual stereotype that's, that's unfair to everybody. On, yeah. on all sides. And I think where we're going as a, as a, as a country is going to be better for it. Boy, it's sure, it's sure not fun watching it go through right now. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, there's definitely things that are fractured that need to be fixed. And I'm with you. You, you know, my son is African-American and, and I love him more than anything. And it's not always a black or white thing. It's a wrong or right thing. So what can we do to make things right? And uh, and, and I'm with you, brother. And uh, I just I just love this. Talk about too. I mean, we've got about, you know, five, six minutes. You're also streaming these games. Where can people stream your games and find these games to and support these teams and support these communities? So there's, 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 there's two things I want to mention. Both of them are the same thing. Stream the games. It does cost money. We're not apologizing for charging because we're in the COVID time where some of our teams can't even have fans. Yeah. But we're letting our players participate. So live – dot the basketball league dot net backward slash your team that you want to support backward slash r backward slash your player's name if you put your player's name you want to support the player gets 25 percent of what tbl generates additionally you buy a jersey the player gets a percentage a significant percentage wow. of jersey so so if the jersey if scott fields was a player playing for the kokomo bobcats when number 12 was purchased and the name Fields is written on the back, Scott's getting 33% of the, of the, of the gross cost of that, of that product. We're sending it straight to them. And I mean, we've had, I mean, I think we've spent, after this week, we'll have over $20,000 we've paid out to players just on jersey sales. Wow. And similar to that through, through the revenue. So we're, we're, we're generating money, but it's also going back to the, to the intellectual property of the player. So we're letting the players benefit on it as well. And I appreciate you asking that. Some of our live stream broadcasts are incredible. Great announcers, great coverage. Some, not so much. We're still got to get better. So it's a work in progress. But with all these new teams, you can't, <coughs> you can't expect them to be perfect. Yeah. Well, again, it, it's development league. So, you know, broadcasters are learning. Uh, an announcers are learning. Uh, coaches are learning. Players are developing their skills. They're learning how to be out and be active and, yeah, it, it's a brand, but yet it's it's a it's a it's a work in progress, and it's always going to be a work in progress. And you're going to continue to tweak things and continue to make things better. But I love hearing that portions of those proceeds from those um, marketing sales. Maybe you should be meeting with the NCAA and fix some of those things too. <laughs> I think it's fair. I, th I think it's I think I think it's absolutely fair that 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 you know if you if you generate it, why don't you get to participate in it? I'll tell you another thing. I believe. I believe the day's coming where the Euro model is coming to the United States. Hey, I, no, no problem there. Mentioned today of people buying and, and they're going to put 16, 17, 18 year olds, they're going to pay them $100,000, $150,000, and they're going to make them pro. And then, it, well, I think the piece that they miss is they need to play against men. Forget the amount of money they make, they need to play against men so they can get better. Luca didn't get better playing in a 16, 17, 18 year old league. That's Giannis exactly. didn't play. Giannis got his butt kicked when he was in Greece at 16. Ricky Rubio was 14, getting beat up by men. And this That's country, okay. we yep. reclassify them so they play in the same age group. And then we take the shoe companies and we say, you, you support your school. However, we get the money into the kids' hands. Well, let's stop having to lie. Let's stop having to cheat. Let's say, if you're going to be a pro, go be a pro, stay in your home, stay in your public school, play with men, NBA, NBA uh, the shoe companies, pay them directly, celebrate the $200,000 check they got versus a check going through someone else, and let's build a system that keep them in school, 
Let them get a degree online. The whole world is studying online now. So is there as much value going to college to be in college? The education piece is important, but let's look at it a little differently for these people because let me ask you this, Scott. Do you know, has there ever been a one and doneer that got his degree? Yeah. Right, right. So why do they have to go to college? Right, yeah. The MBA needed another year to look at the kids. That means they're a product. If that's yep. the case, let's develop them as people, help them become the best they can be. You know, again, when you and I grew up, John Kitchell knocked you down on the playground a few times. He you darn to. right. That's he right. Knocked you down when we played pickup. Ted and I Kitchell, wanted to. I wanted to play against those guys because I knew they were making me better to go absolutely. play against those guys out, the, out out in the out on the playground, out on the blacktop. Because man, that's that's where I got better as a 12, 13 year old playing against those 17, 18 year olds who's already you know freshman in college. That's where you get better, and, and you know. Kobe Bryant was playing as a nine-year-old. Uh, you look at Manu Ginobili and Tony Parker, and come on, man, these guys have been groomed. And we've robbed our kids of that. Yep. Again, the desire, they don't want to be exposed. I've talked to major, major high school kids, and I tell them, if you come here, you are going to be exposed. You have to want to be exposed to embrace that. Because it's not that you're, you know, if you're five nine and you're trying to dribble up against our kids and you're seventeen, you're getting double teamed, you're getting knocked down. They're going to take the ball. What everyone's going to watch isn't that you got knocked down. What are you going to do next? You're going to step up. You're going to defend full court. You're going to become better. How do you respond to that? That's how you become better. It's okay to be exposed. We all get exposed at some point, but we rob our kids of the blessing of that. A uh, 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 Muffet McGraw, the Notre Dame women's coach, mm -hmm. was a fabulous coach. She had a great quote that said, "Today's parents rob their kids of the blessing of failure. Let your kids fail. It's okay. Don't go in the portal. Let them stay. Get through this. Let them get better. Let them make it where they're at. Versus everything that's going on right now that is so give the kids what they need, what they want, what they buy, but it's not it's not serving their needs very well. I don't think." Yeah, Mags, I I'm with you, brother. This has been a powerful, passionate conversation. God bless you, my friend. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep plowing forward. Your journey is beautiful. Um, I I'm a believer and I'm a supporter. And let's hopefully that a lot of people will see this content, share this content, and let's continue to allow this to grow and evolve uh, organically the way that it should. Because I'll tell you what, you and your wife are doing a fabulous job. God bless you. Uh, I, I wish we, we got to get you back again. I know you're in Syracuse. You probably got a game coming up, but be safe in your travels. Continue what you're doing. And thank you so much for, uh, again, being a part of the Coach Scott Field Show so where we can serve and empower others. And, and let's use, continue to use this tool, my man. I appreciate our, our time together. Look forward to, to, to uh, seeing you on the sideline sooner than later. <laughs> you need to be back out there coaching, and, and I got to tell you, um, the greatest blessing of my life is, is is being married to my wife for 40 years. So, you know, the, the wealth I have, anybody can have if you want to be disciplined, find the right person, serve the right God, be a great father, and those things will give you real wealth because that's what's most important. Thank you, my Amen. friend. Good Amen, brother. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of this and, and continue doing what you're doing. You know I'm going to be watching from behind. Thanks, Scott. Got it, brother. Be safe out there. Ladies and gentlemen, again, that's Dave Magley, uh, president of the TBL. We're rocking the TBL. <laughs> Go TBL. Do what you guys do. Get out and support these guys. Find these guys on the internet. Support them and, and back them because I'll tell you what, they're, they're doing it for all the right reasons. God bless you. Be safe. And we'll see you again on another edition of the Coach Scott Field Show. God bless, Mags. Thanks, Scott. Bring it in. Thank you for watching the Coach Scott Field Show, the nation's number one digital coaches show. This DVNA television broadcast is a Roar Media production. Don't forget to subscribe to the Coach's YouTube channel. Like and follow him on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Have yourself dressed and ready to go in the locker room for the next exciting show coming soon. Thank you for watching the Coach Scott Field Show, the nation's number one digital coaches show. This DBNA television broadcast is a Roar Media production.